as we have mentioned earlier that human communication is an intentional activity, but this intentional activity need to uh, explain to us uh, that how does intentionality uh, functions within this rule governed framework of language use. So, if meaning is an institutional fact and if language is, is a primitive institution, then how does intentionality operate within this um, framework of language use. I would like to um, point out that human intentionality is linguistic. So, it is defined by language. Now, human beings holds a intentional relationship with the other. So, uh, or human world engagement or human, uh, human engagement is an intentional uh, relationship. Human world or human, human relationship is an intentional relationship. So, intentionality holds a link between the speaker and the hearer. And look at that how does it intentionally act, intentionality means directedness, how our expressions are directed towards something and what kind of changes it bring. Look at the first statement that I have uh, stated, as the speaker or the addresser communicated something to A, the audience or the addressee. Second statement, as the painter while painting the white wall green did something to the wall. Then the third statement, as the dentist while extracting my wisdom tooth did something to my gums. This I have uh, taken from Borwa's writing on Gandhi's presupposition of human communication. Now, the second and the third statement is using the word to as it has been used in the case of the first statement, but the to is very differently used in the second and third statement. When it is about changes, what kind of change it brings, the second and third statement shows that it brings a causal change, that when a painter is painting the wall and making it green it brings a causal effect. Similarly, uh, it is about the dentist and this is what Gandhi writes, a fundamental and elusive feature of human communication is the sense of the word to in which we say that somebody communicated something to him, spoke to him, issued an utterance to him. The sense of the word to here is not the sense in which we might say that in painting a white wall black somebody did something to the wall or in the case of tooth act, the dentist did something to him. What we want to understand is the sense in which the act of communication is directed by the speaker towards his audience. Without the audience being a target merely of a physical action initiated by the speaker. So, if I do not target to the audience, if I do not make a purposive expression, then communication does not take place or the meaning is not communicated or meaning will not be understood. So, this notion of understanding and communication is not only intentional, but also non-causal. It is in this context Gandhi uses the word to um, very differently. Now, in the case of a causal nature of intentionality, what is happening is this, that we all know that language use is a rule governed activity, is an, meaning is an institutional uh, fact. Now, if that is the case and that has been argued by from the perspective of the causal theory of intentionality of language use, then whenever we say something and try to induce a kind of a belief in the hearer's mind, the hearer would respond following uh, my expression. So, when I say something, I make sure that the hearer believes it and responds to that. So, taking 
when I talk about a meaning, I take the effect into account. So, it is in this context there are different types of performative expressions which has been discussed by Searle. For example, promise, I hereby promise that so and so. So, if the promise is stated in a particular way, then the hearer believes that yes, the speaker will fulfill the promise. So, this whole idea of normativity which you know regulates human communication shows that it's, it fulfills certain conditions. It fulfills certain um, conditions in the sense that promise is understood within a particular convention that yes, this is a promise and the hearer is going to fulfill that promise or if this is an assertion. Say for example, if I say it is raining outside or x is not honest, then I must ensure in my speech to the hearer that x is dishonest or I must ensure this um, to the hearer if I am talking about it is raining, then, uh, then he or she must believe that it is raining. So, it is in that sense the speaker succeeds in inducing a belief in the hearer's mind. Thus, communication intentionally involves certain kind of a force, Sal calls it an elocutionary force. The force is the act of inducing, the act of making the other believe that something is the case. In the case of pretending, the speaker tries to induce a belief in the hearer's mind and he knows very well that whatever he says is false. So, he wants to induce a false belief in the hearer's mind, but he also articulates in such a way that the hearer accepts it as a kind of a true belief. So, so there is a there is a distinction between how um, the speaker expresses it. Uh, on the one hand, whenever the speaker says something, he should mean it, and that is the, that is the natural aspect of uh, um, performative expressions. On the other hand, in the pretending, the hearer says something, but he doesn't mean it, and what he means is only try to believe or induce a belief which the, the hearer should follow. So, it is in this context uh, the notion of addressing is important. The addressing shows that how we perform or solicit a kind of a response from the audience. Now, in the in the Sarlian theoretical framework, there is no uh, notion of addressing. The speaker says something and the hearer acts accordingly. That is the kind of a intentionality uh, figures in the communicative uh, framework of a convention or a context. But in the case of Gandhi, Gandhi is saying that how do we communicate, how do we start this communication? We can begin this communication by addressing. So, for example, when Vivekananda is uh, you know, um, starting his speech in the world parliament of religion, he says, my dear brothers and sisters. So, so this is how he tries to address. So, addressing is an important aspect of communication, where the speaker solicits the response. The speakers invite a response normatively. On the other hand, a causal theoretical framework will talk about performative, which will elicit a response. So, there is a difference between soliciting a response and eliciting a response from the audience. And Gandhi, you know, theory of communication refers to the notion of addressing is something a precondition of human communication. This is how Gandhi illustrates uh, this idea of addressing. An act of addressing is an act which the addresser attracts addresser's attention to the fact that he, the addresser, is not really trying to, not really causally to hold his attention, but he wants the addressee to attain him of his own accord. So, there is a freedom. 
So, there are two important aspects that I would uh, Gandhi talks about. One is addressing where he directs uh, some kind of intentionality, intentionality of appealing to the addresses, that when you address, you appeal to the addressing. This is one part and appealing is a normative uh, concept, whereas at the same time Gandhi says that when the hearer would respond, he would respond recognizing this fact that it is important to respond to the speaker. So, so the, by saying this, the hearer is free from what is being said to him. So, so, so this is important that the speaker whenever he delivers something or speaks something to the um, hearer, the hearer are not bound to respond, the rather hearers are free to respond. I think that is how, I think that is how we guarantee some kind of an autonomy to the hearer. Thank you.